Welcome to Kenya. We are live at a wildebeest crossing. Uh, my name is Brent Leo Smith. I've got Dangerous Dave Eastall on camera. And we're on the Mara River at one of the southern lookout crossings. And a big herd of wildebeest has just started crossing right now. They're pouring into the water. You can see how low the Mara River is in comparison to when we were here last year with James. And uh, we a little bit better for the wildebeest, less crocodiles. If you want to ask me a question, just pop them on the feed below. Remember, this is 100% live coming to you at this very second from the Maasai Mara in Kenya. You can hear that incredible noise. I'm just going to keep quiet. Isn't this absolutely fantastic? to all of them as they plunge into the river. Hi Doreen. Doreen says wow. Wow indeed. This is one of the most spectacular wildlife events that happen anywhere in the world and we are very very excited to be able to bring it to you live. Incredible amount of sound that comes with this. I almost think it's the ones that have crossed come back and start looking for ones they've missed. Hey, where'd you go? No, I saw you yesterday. No, well, you mean well, no crocodiles in the river? But the river crossings this year are going to be a little bit easier for them due to the low water. These crossings are quite notorious for, for wildebeest drowning when the water is high. As you can see, not too bad this year. They're able to cross it quite comfortably. Peter is wondering, are there crocodiles here? But Peter, I'm sure there are some crocodiles here, but this section of the river seems to have less very big crocs, but I'm sure there are somewhere close by. And uh, who knows, maybe all this crossing action might attract some of the bigger behemoths from down or upstream to make their way straight towards this spot. Now, I always funny, find it funny that some of them decide halfway through the river that they want to go back. And of course, they're quite often met by quite a stream um, of wildebeest going in the opposite direction, which sort of forces them to change their mind yet again. Now, believe it or not, I have been to the Mara a few times before, uh, but this is my first crossing, and I'm very happy to be experiencing it live with you. It is absolutely fantastic. Isn't this absolutely magic? Uh, remember, keep your questions coming through. We are live from Kenya in the Maasai Mara. <laughs> Carrie is wondering, is there a theory to why they go back and forth uh, through the river? Uh, Carrie, well, it's to do with the grazing. So once the grazing is finished in one area, they'll come back to the other. And it also depends on local rain. So it'll rain quite late through the year here. So a little bit of rain to the south might bring them back across the river uh, just to catch that green flush and vice versa, rain to the north, east or west. Now we must always remember to keep a lookout for other predators around the crossings. Certain prides specialize in hiding in the croton thickets. And uh, pounce upon them. Now Jilly was wondering that. Now this is the Purungat Pride territory. This is the same pride I was with last Saturday. No, Friday night. I spent the whole night with the Purungat Pride. So this is the territory. Um, but they were a little bit further south last time we were here. So they might be around. You never know. Now you will catch... Of course there's lots of people enjoying this incredible experience. And... Uh, in the wildebeest you can see are completely unperturbed continuing on their merry way through the river now it's difficult to see where the end of this is because they're coming through uh, quite a steep little gully on the on the on the opposite bank but I think it looks like that we're petering out to the last few of the gnus Yeah, 
case everyone seems to think this is a good place for them to cross uh, indeed it is not too many crocs and nice shallow water Sounds are absolutely incredible. No, no. Where have you been? I was on the other side. I'm back. Missed you. Dave, just go to where they're coming in. There's, there seems to be a little bit of a, a traffic jam forming there and some collapsing as they hit some mud. So they're still streaming out. Well, Lisa thinks, uh, well, Lisa's being a comedian today, and she says it sounds like music. Yes, the, 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 the GNU name is very apparent when they have a, a, where they get their name from, and that constant sound that they do make. <coughs> uh, Brian is wondering, well, with the passage this easy, why do other wildebeest decide to go on steep banks with steep water well generally this would be one of those deep water crossings with steep banks uh, it's just that this year there's been very little rain so the river is very low so oh did you see the baby fall over um, right at the beginning there oh he's up again he's got a bit of a sore leg though there yeah, that one Oh, he got, oh, he's fine. He's up on moving in. So, Brian, normally this, the waters are quite a few meters deeper than this at this time of the year. So, they're just very lucky this year. Oh, here comes the next batch out of that little gully. Uh, there's a bit of soft mud that seems to catch a few of them as they come through there. Isn't this incredible? You are seeing this live from Kenya. For those who've just joined, this is a wildebeest crossing, uh, one of the southern lookout crossings of the Mara River. Jackie is wondering whether these are blue wildebeest. Uh, Jackie, indeed, they are a version of blue wildebeest. Or they're also called white bearded gnus. So slightly different from the ones that you get in southern Africa, uh, but very much rel uh, a relative. So they are considered to be blue wildebeest, but this is a subspecies called the white bearded gnu. And they just keep streaming, streaming through. And you see they're struggling a little bit in that mud at the beginning. Oh, it seems to be, have we come towards the end now? Nope, and more coming. Now, a lot of you are just joining now and wondering where the crocodiles are. Well, they're not here presently. This is a lovely shallow crossing. This section of the Mara River tends to have less of those very big crocodiles as we see up further further north. And uh, it doesn't mean there aren't crocodiles here. It just means maybe the crocodiles were around the corner. Uh, they might come in. You never know. Now, Leslie is asking, at a guess, how many do I think they are? Now, Leslie, if we forget the ones that are, are crossing right in front of us, and um, we just take a slight look to the right, Dave. Um, Leslie, why won't you to count them for me? Why don't you try? Here we go. Dave's going to give you a pan across. I would say there's a few hundred thousand around here at the moment, Leslie couple of hundred thousand old beast. More streaming into the river at the moment. Hi 
Heidi is wondering how steep is the bank on our side and do they have to climb? Heidi, they do it. It is very steep. It's probably a good five or six meters high, but they'll have one of those uh, ancient routes that they've used to climb up over the last couple of thousands of years. So it is steep and that's where they're popping out. You see where they're popping out there, Dave? So there, that's where they're popping out. Whoop, there we go. One, two, three, boom. So they're popping out in ones and twos, so it's obviously quite steep and quite narrow. Isn't this incredible? Just sort of a never ending line. Rishi is wondering, will zebras cross as well? Yes, Rishi. Uh, zebras actually normally lead the crossing, and um, as we arrived here, there were some zebras crossing through, um, but they've already passed through and disappeared into the mass. Oh, there's some who have changed their mind. He's decided, no, he doesn't want to cross. He wants to go back. Coming in the middle, Dev. Yeah, he's like, no, we're, we're, we're done. We don't want to cross anymore. We want to go back to the other side. This is where quite often quite a little bit of confusion can take place. See, there we go. Just like that. They've turned around and decided they're going back across again. These sounds are just spectacular. Shirley is wondering, will the noise attract predators? Oh, Shirley, I think these wildebeest can be heard from such a vast distance um, that it's quite difficult to say. I'm sure that any lion um, with a slightly sensible mind knows that there's lots of food close by. And uh, you've got to remember, it's unlike other parts of Africa where you do not have this mass of animals and, and the slightest noise might attract the attention of, of the surrounding predators. But the predators around here, I'm sure, know that the migration is here. Dave, there's a saddlebald stork coming in above them. Can you see it? There we go, saddlebald stork. Beautiful. And you can see there's still a lot of wildebeest up towards Lookout Hill as well. Now, the saddlebald stork will take advantage, like the grey herons and black headed herons, of uh, all the insects that are disturbed by the wildebeest as they move. Well, it looks like. No, every time I think we're almost at the end, some more wildies pop out. Laura is wondering, how do the babies find their mothers? if they separated during the crossing. Now you can hear there's very different types of gnus that are going on. You can hear the very distinct of the male trying to keep his little harem intact. Uh, but also, um, there we go, you can hear, there's exactly a perfect example. There's a youngster calling. Okay, a little bit to the, there we go. Oh, he was calling, he's now found his mom. But, until mom came and found him. So that's how they find each other, by talking to each other, by calling to each other. Now, not, of course, not always is it a happy ending where they find each other. Often, um, they do get separated as well. Isn't this incredible? Remember, uh, for those of you joining us now, or just logging in, this is live from Kenya. We are at a river crossing, uh, the Fuldebeest migration, moving from the Mara, Mara National Reserve into the Mara Triangle.
Li Shan says, will crocodiles risk injury by attacking in such low water? It's unlikely that the crocodiles will be injured um, even in low water like this. They probably find it's just a little bit harder to, to ambush the, uh, the wildebeest. But if there was a decent sized hungry croc around here, I'm sure by now there would at least be one or two wildebeest in his jaws. bunch more just arrived and they sort of tumble down the hill just a never-ending mass of news It seems to be like there's more building up on the opposite bank. And this is quite a long, long crossing. So you can a little bit to the right, Dave, not those guys. No, sorry, to the left. There we go, a little bit to the right now. Keep coming. There we go. You see that that's sort of the feeder. It looks like from uh, where those ones that are popping out down below. Feeding into that little lugger and then out and through. The noise is something to behold. It truly is. Megan is wondering how long will they go on? Well, till they're done, Megan, till the ones decide that they don't want to cross anymore. And remember, it can be back and forth between both sides depending on what local rain has happened in the area. Um, so it is a, a you must remember, like anything in, in the natural world, uh, there's no set rule, there's no some, nothing set in stone, and it can change on a daily basis. I think this one is nearly done looking at where the, the wildebeest are filling, feeding from. And, uh, well, as I say that again, more pour through, but I think we're right towards the end now. Now, Jilly is wondering how far have they traveled. Now, Jilly, it's, it, they don't travel one long stretch at a time um, they will travel relatively smaller distances and then stop and feed and whatnot but the whole circuit oh I can't remember now is probably around five or six hundred kilometers I'm gonna have to double check but um, their whole circuit from down to the southern plains around in Dutu where they give birth um, back through the Grumeti um, and into the sort of middle Serengeti and then up through into the Mara Oh, there's some zebras joining the, the crossing. Someone, there we go. And there we go. Zebras joining the crossing. Someone was asking a bit earlier whether zebras crossed. Remember, this is coming to you 100% live from Kenya. We are on the banks of the Mara River watching the wildebeest and zebra migration cross. Saibal would like to know, do they choose the same spot to cross every year? Saibal, uh, no they don't. Uh, they will have various favorite spots and in this area there are three or four crossings um, that they'll cross every year depending. And we've seen them cross at two crossings here so far. So it all, all depends um, on the year, the water level um, and, and grass and, and depending on where they're going to cross.
Sue says it's wonderful to see them cross safely for once. Uh, indeed it is, Sue. Now, normally these crossings are actually quite a lot more dangerous than the crossings that are filled with crocodiles because when the river's high, a lot of animals drown here. Now, a lot of you might think that's quite harsh, but that is one of nature's way of taking care of the numbers. So, oh, is there a crocodile there? Why are those ones all running back? Right up at the front, a little bit to the right, see there? They seem to be a bit of panic amongst those ones. That, now, there might not be a crocodile, there could just be panic. Um, that happens as well. But there's definitely something disturbing those. Um, let's go a bit further forward. We don't want to get too close to the edge. So there's a little deep channel right at the end there. And they're a little, a little bit nervous there. I don't see a crocodile. I think they could have just been a bit nervous. But if there was going to be a crocodile, it would definitely be in that little little gully there. Jesse said the zebra look pregnant, are they? Well, Jesse, the zebra give birth throughout the year. They don't have a set breeding time. So um, they're, they're very possibly lots of pregnant zebra at the moment. I'm just... It just seems to be a bit more panic now. Now, that could just be one individual panicking. Uh, or there could have been a crocodile there that missed. But we can't really see from, from this, this spot. Mm, I don't think there's a crocodile. I just think there, there was a bit of panic. But as I said, if there, there was going to be a crocodile, that would be the spot where it would lie in ambush. Just having a careful look with my binoculars down along the water's edge there just to see if there's any sign of... Ah, uh, see, I think I know what's happening. Is what's happening is they're just getting a little bit stuck because it's a very narrow um, spot for them to come up. And then the, the fact that they, get, that they get stuck there, they don't like being in the water for longer than they have to, uh, that could have caused a bit of that panic there. Brian's wondering whether they are able to maintain their harem after crossing or do they just find more. Now it's very difficult to maintain their harem. They're constantly losing it and regaining it. Well, there we go. That's the last of this crossing by the looks of things. Big jumps at the end here. No, no crocodiles. But uh, remember to keep an eye out on Facebook throughout today and uh, throughout the night tonight. As we're going to be out all night um, following different prides of lions. So very, very exciting. Uh, we've still got quite a long way to go. We're heading towards the Sand River. Uh, going to see if we can catch up with the Salas Pride or maybe the Pungarit Pride. Um, so very, very exciting. So we're going to let these last wildebeest cross because we've still got quite a long way to travel uh, today. But as I said, keep an eye out on Facebook just in case we go live again. <laughs>